Today's lesson, section four, graphing with coordinates. Uh, again, we will start our graphing and uh, basic graphing today, plotting points, graphing really simple looking equations. And as when graphing in mathematics, we use what's called a coordinate plane. And this is when we're talking two dimensional. And when I say two dimensional, uh, left, right, and up and down. Okay, and that's what you see here, so you see. Again, we see here a flat coordinate plane, two-dimensional, flat. Uh, we do have later on, in your higher mathematics, we do have three-dimensional graphs to where you have, instead of an X and Y, you have an X, Y, and a Z. And that's a little bit higher mathematics, um, mostly college math. It says, when graphing in mathematics, we use a coordinate plane, and that's what you see here. Another name for it is a Cartesian plane. <clears throat> it is made up of a horizontal number line and again a number line is just like your uh, you've got the zero in the middle the positives on the right the negatives on the left that's what you have a horizontal number line which is called the x-axis and you have a vertical number line which is called the y-axis and it, it also has the negatives down and the positives up the intersection of the two axes and this is basic definitions that that you do need to know you need to know all these underlying things up here where the two axes intersect is called the origin. That's right there in the middle, and you see the little red line up here on the screen pointing towards it. The two number lines divide the planes into four equal parts called quadrants. Notice the root word of quadrants, or the root of quadrants being quad. What does the prefix quad mean? Four. Quad means four, and that's the reason they call them quadrants, because there's one, two, three, four quadrants. Notice how the quadrants are numbered. They start in the top right hand corner with quadrant one and they go counterclockwise. To where quadrant two is the top left, quadrant three is the bottom left, and quadrant four is the bottom right. Any coordinate can be plotted on a graph. And the coordinates, um, it says the coordinates or locations of a point on the coordinate plane is called an ordered pair. We called them an ordered pair because there's two of them, a pair of them. There's two numbers, x, y. Uh, they're ordered. The first word ordered there means the order is important. The first one's going to be an X. The second one's going to be a Y. Always. Very important that you know that. The first number in your ordered pair is an X. The second number in your ordered pair is a Y. The coordinates of the origin is the ordered pair is 0, 0. That's how we write ordered pair. We've got the parentheses there, the two numbers in the middle separated by a comma. The first number is an X. The second number is a Y. First number will tell you how far left or right to go. The second number will tell you how far up or down to go. <clears throat> Before I do this, I want to show you how to actually plot points. We'll just make up some. I did it again. Okay, here's. Let's go over some uh, points. How to plot them. And this is what when you're doing your graphs in my class. Let me show you how I start them. <coughs> right there. That's all I need. To start your graph I need more or less a crosshair. That crosshair is your origin. Do you have to put numbers out through here, numbers to the left, numbers up, numbers... No. You can count. Okay? A lot of people want you to. A lot of teachers might want you to to put one, two, three, four, five, six. Unless you've got a scale that's different from one box equals one number to where if you want each box to count two or you want each box to count a thousand or you want each box to count something different than one, then I want you to number it. But if each box counts one, this is fine. And the reason I do that is a lot of times we spend more time preparing the graph then we actually do graphing whatever we're trying to graph. And that's, uh, that's kind of, of a waste of time. So what I'd like for you to do is just a starting point. Now when we're plotting points, let's look at some. 3, 4. <clears throat> Again, I told you the first number's an X, the second number's a Y. The first number tells you how far left or right to go. The second number tells you how far up or down to go. You need to know what I'm about to show you because if you don't, you're not going to be able to graph lines, parabolas, and these other graphs that we're going to graph later on this year. If it's a positive, let's think about it. Th imagine a number line. Imagine, imagine just a plain old number line. Here's zero in the middle. Where's the positives? To the right. So why would people go to the left? Right? And uh, the same thing with uh, your vertical axis. If zero's in the middle, think about a thermometer. 
positive degrees, where are they at? Up, why would people go down? Negative degrees are down. Same way with your x and y axis here. To graph 3, 4, the first number tells you left and right. Are we going to go right or left? So we're going to start at the origin. Why do you start at the origin? What does the word origin mean? The beginning. An origin is the beginning of something. That's what, like the origin of all species. It's, it's the beginning, where they started from. So uh, that's where you begin your graph, at the origin. So we're going to go to the right, how many? One, two, three. Don't put a dot there. Don't put your point there. A lot of people will go ahead and put, no, don't. Because now, like Randy said, you got you had to go right three. And since it's a positive four, you go up one, two, three, four. Any questions? Let's do a negative two, positive one. Go ahead, Randy. Tell me how to get there. Start at the origin, go left two. Put you a dot. Perfect. Any questions? Last one. Let's do three, negative two. Uh, do it for me. Let's see. Danielle. Start at the origin, go which way? Right, right three. One, two, three. Perfect. Positive three, negative two. There's how you graph it. Let's go back to our paper now. And it says determine the quadrants and coordinates of all the points on the graph. Let's go through these and uh, try to figure out where they're at. In the next example, I, I've kind of did it for you already. Uh, I, I didn't actually do those exact points, but we did some similar to it. So let me get my pen up here. Let's start on them. Uh, can y'all see the lines? From back? It might be a little bit hard to see the lines, so hopefully, hopefully you can kind of see them. Let's see. Uh, Johnny, I'll let you do the first one. Can you see the one that I'm circling right here? What's the coordinates of that point? Start, starting at the origin, how do I get to that point? I go right how many? I go right two, and I go up how many? Three. So what's the coordinates of that point, Johnny? Right two and up three will be, will it be negative two? Because you went right. Positive two, positive three. Good job. Uh, let's see, Dakota. Let's do this up. Well, by the way, I, I didn't mention this. What quadrant's that in? That's first quadrant. Our quadrants, most of the time, we name them with Roman numerals, I. Two would be two I's. Three would be three I's. Four would be IV. Good job. Uh, the point up here, who did I say? Dakota. Starting at the origin, how do I get to it? I go right, up, right, three, up, five. What would that point be, Dakota? Three, five. Three, five. No, that's three point. There's a decimal there. Sorry. So that'd be three five, and it is, it is also in the first quadrant. <clears throat> Let's do this one, the point here. Uh, let me get some of these that haven't, haven't done one. Tessa, help me with it. Point up here. To get to it, starting at the origin, I go left. How many spots? Can you see it back there behind you? <laughs> to get to this one, I go left one. Good job. And I go up, left one, up four. Can you tell me what point that'll be? Uh, instead of one comma four, since you went left, it'll be negative one. Comma four. Makes sense. Left one. That would be quadrant two. Good job. Okay, the next few we'll just do as a group. Let's, let's do this one next. Doing this one right here next. So therefore, good job. In order to get to that point, we go left six and up two. So that would be a negative six. Up two would be a positive two. And that would be in quadrant two. Let's see. What about this one right here? Negative four and zero. Do you see that you don't move up or down any? But you, you go left four, that's negative four. You don't go up any, so that's zero. Is that in a quadrant? No. It's on the x-axis. And that's what, instead of putting a quadrant, let's just put the axis on. Okay, let's do this, this other one that's on the x-axis. How do we get to it? 
That's going to be, again, x-axis. Is the first number the only one that's going to be plotted? No. Because now we're down here to where the... Do what? Say it one more time. Is the first quadrant... Both of them are positive in the first quadrant. Is that what you're asking? Your second quadrant, the x is negative. The third quadrant, let's do them. Let's see what's negative in the third quadrant. Let's do this point right here. Negative 2, negative 4. Because if you go left 2 and down 4, do you see you're going to be in this third quadrant? The point here that's on the y-axis? Careful. Well, what? 0, negative 3. Because you don't move left or right any, but you go down 3. 0, negative 3, and that's on the y-axis. And the last one? Positive 3, negative 2, and that's going to be in the fourth quadrant. Second, think about it. if you go left and up, you're going to be in the second quadrant. So that's going to be negative, positive. So the x would be negative, the y would be positive. If you go left and down, both of them would be negative. That would be the third quadrant. If you go right and down, you'd have a positive and then a negative, and you'd be in the fourth quadrant, uh, x positive, y negative. Skip an example two because we did kind of cover that a while ago. And going to example three to where we're actually graphing lines. Watch very closely. Got three examples. If, if I ever do this many examples for a certain section, that must be pretty important. We'll be doing this the rest of the year. We'll graph these three lines, and I'll actually show you after that how that you can do use this method that we're going to do to graph anything. It says, make a table for the following equations and find values of y by substituting 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Do we have to make a table? Yes, on these. Graph the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane and connect the points to make a line. Let me show you what I mean. First equation, y equals 3x. This is called a t-table. Why is it called a t-table? Because it looks like a t. Okay? Our x's are going to be on the left. Our y is going to be on the right. They tell us in the directions to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for our x's. 1, 2, three, four, five. If you'll watch, this isn't very hard. If you take y equals 3x, in the place of an x, put a 1. Jake, after you take that, that x, and instead of writing x, you put 1. Just read for me what this says now. 3, what's it going to be there? Three, 31? Three, 3 times 1. Look at that. When x is 1, simplify that. What is 3 times 1? Read for me what it says then. y equals 3. So when x is 1, y equals 3. Right. Okay, take that exact same equation. But in the place of x, we're going to put a 2. Read for me, Randy, what I'm going to have when I put a 2 there. The whole thing. 3, uh -uh, not x, 3 times 2. We don't have an x there anymore. When x is 2, does that make sense? Instead of an x, we have a 2. Now read for me, simplify it, anybody. What do we have now? y equals 6. So when x is 2, y equals 6. Makes sense. Do you see this is, again, I, I told you this the other day, this is the exact same thing we did in section... Well, last section, to where we took and we, instead of a variable, we took and we plugged stuff in for the variable. Same thing. So this is algebra. you got the variable. we got actually two variables in this one, a y and an x. Uh, when x is 3, we now have y equals 3 times 3, which is 9. So when x is 3, y is 9. Look at the pattern. In every one of these, you're going to have patterns. 3, 6, 9, 12. 15. We're not done. Um, ordered pairs. Let's go back. Remember when we was doing ordered pairs a while ago? We graphed 2, 3. We graphed 4, 5. We graphed 7, 8. What was the first number in that ordered pair? What did I tell you? It was, it was an X. The second number was a Y. Look what we got, guys. We have X's and Y's. 
the first point that we're going to plot is 1, 3. That, it's an x, y. So once you, once you make your table here, you take this table and you simply plot these points. You plot 1, 3, you plot 2, 6, you plot 3, 9. Do you see why plotting points is going to be so valuable to you? And again, this is all I, I require on the graphs. Just give me a starting point. The first one, 1, 3. Uh, Hunter, Hunter, tell me how to graph that 1, 3. Write 1, up, 1, 2, 3, put a dot there. The second point, uh, Josh, 2, 6. How do I plot 2, 6? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The third point is 3, 9. Uh, Samantha here today, Samantha Hammond. Good deal. Can you tell me how to plot the point 3, 9? Good job, right, 3. Up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you graph it right, look guys, you got a pattern here too. Math is all about patterns. You got patterns everywhere. Joseph, four twelve. How am I gonna plot it? Right four up twelve. It's gonna be right here. Uh, five fifteen, we go right five up, right there. You got a line. Every one of them on these examples that we're gonna be working are called linear equations. Positive 5, positive 15. Connector dots. Put you an arrow on both ends. And these, again, are called linear equations because they do form lines. Any question on how you graph that? These are, the linear equations like this are the most basic type of equations we graph. Nonlinear, which gets into quadratics, cubics, quartics, uh, look a little bit different. And I'll, I'll graph some of those for you in just a second. And show you, you can use them. You can do the same method to graph anything. If you can do what I just did, you can graph anything. And I need you to learn how to do what I just did because uh, graphing is, is extremely important on this graduation exam. Let's try another. The second one tells us to graph y equals 2x plus 1. All this does is give us this one extra step. Let's make a t-table, x, y. And again, I'm going to plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Do I have to plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5? The only reason I'm doing that is because that's what the directions told me to do. I can plug in any number I want. I can plug in a half. I can plug in two-thirds if I wanted to. I can plug in a million if I wanted to. It's going to be on the same line. should be if I did it right. Okay, let's uh, try the first one. And again, I'm going to show you how we're going to take x equals 1. We're going to rewrite that using x equals 1 and find out what y is. Let's see, somebody I hadn't called on. Um, Joey. <laughs> when x equals 1, rewrite that for me and tell me what it says now. Does everybody understand that? So, simplify. What is 2 times 1 plus 1? Y equals 3. So, when x equals 1, y equals 3. Any questions? I'm going to do one more to where I actually show those steps, but you should get to the point to where you don't even have to write that down. You can do them in your head. Uh, Anthony, when x is 2, rewrite, read it, what it's going to be after uh, you plug in x equals 2. Perfect. Any questions? What is 2 times 2 plus 1? y equals 5. So when x is 2, y is 5. Do you see that what this is, it's an equation, but it's a rule. It's a, relu it's, relu it's a rule that relates x and y. It tells you how x and y are related. When x is 3, we have y equals 2 times 3 plus 1, 7. Do you see a pattern? 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. If you notice the pattern, you don't even have to finish out the table. The, you don't have to finish plugging them in is what I, what I should have said. X, y axis. First one is positive 1, positive 3, so we're going to go right 1, up 3. So how we get there, Randy? Up 5. Any questions? Right 3, up 7. Right 4, up 9. Right 5, up 11. It's another line. That's what I like about these. If you graph them right, you got a straight line, you know they're right. If you graph it and you've got a point here and you got another point over here and you got another point up here, more than likely on, on these first ones you messed up somewhere. One of those points is wrong. 
quite, that's a, uh, it's called a parabola. And I'm, I'm fixing to graph one of those for you in just a second. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A, -A -A, parabola. Y equals 2X plus 1. There's a picture of Y equals 2X plus 1. Any questions? And finally, the last one that we're going to do on here is Y equals 3X minus 2. Y equals 3X minus 2. Table, X, Y. We're going to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's see. Starting out... Uh, well, I'll let anybody answer it. We only plug in one. We're going to try to do it now without having to show y equals 3 times 1 minus 2. When we plug in 1 for x, imagine we got a 1 there now. 3 times 1 minus 2 is 1. Good job. When we plug in 2, 3 times 2 minus 2 is 4. When we plug in 3, 3 times 3 minus 2 is 7. Pattern. 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. Add three each time. What's the relationship, and this um, gets a little ahead of ourselves, what's the relationship between the equation over here, y equals 3x minus 2, and what you're adding each time? You see that? We're adding how many each time? Three. Look back at the previous problem. We added how many each time? Right there, right? And the first problem, we added how many each time? Y'all see that? There is a relationship, and we'll learn later on that that's called a slope. Uh, but 1, 1, how do we, let's see, Tommy, how do we plot the point 1, 1? Over 1, up 1, right 1, up 1. Let's see, how do we plot the point 2, 4, uh, Lissa? Right 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. How do we plot the point Brittany? 3, 7. I write 3 up 7. And once you get about 3 points plotted, guys, notice up 3, right 1. Up 3, right 1. If you want another point, up 3, right 1. Up 3, right 1. Or, notice my line here. What if I went down 3? How could I get it to lie in that same straight line? <coughs> down 3, left 1. Do you see now it's in the same straight line? Down three, left one. If you have trouble plotting with or drawing a straight line with just a couple of points, uh, use the same pattern and you'll get more points. So there's the picture of y equals 3x minus 2. Any questions? Let me show you that you can use the same process. And this isn't in your notes. This is a little bit of extra information. You can use the same process to graph anything anything. Uh, well, anything two-dimensional. If you notice, I'm a while back here, and this is, uh, again, extra information. These types of graphs that we're doing now is not the only types of graphs there is. When we get in Algebra 2 and pre-calculus, we do polar graphing, which you can see kind of the um, spiral-looking thing back there. It looks kind of like a yin-yang sign. Now, that's actually a graph. The equation of it's up in the top left-hand corner. You've got three-dimensional graphs. You've got, uh, you've got tons of different types of graphs. This is only one type of graph, okay, one type of graph. So, okay, next step I'm going to show you that you can use uh, the same method to graph things that's not, that doesn't look like that. Let's try to graph y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. A little bit more complicated looking, but it's the same process is what I'm trying to get across to you. It's the same, build a table, x, y. I'm going to plug in, if you don't know how to do negatives, fine. That's, that's no big deal. But I'm going to plug in some negatives just so I get a full graph here. I'm going to plug in negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Plug in a few more numbers. The more numbers you have, the better your graph's going to look. Some of you might remember how to do negatives. Let's do y equals negative 4 squared plus 2 times negative 4. Everywhere I have an x, put negative 4. Because when my, my first set, excuse me, my first point, x is negative 4. So when x is negative 4, can anybody help me out on this? y equals 16. What's 2 times negative 4? I'm going to put minus 8 plus 1. What's 16 minus 8 plus 1? 
Good job. So when x is negative 4, y is 9. Our next point. I'm just going to erase those, and in the place of x, we put negative 3. That's going to be positive 9. I would, this is the way I do it, and we'll get to this later on. A positive times a negative is a negative. So that's going to be a minus 6 plus 1. What is that? When x is negative 2, and then I'll go through and do them the rest of them after this. When x is negative 2, we have 4, negative 4, positive 1. What is that? Positive, positive 1. We go through and actually plug in the rest of them, and I'll do these uh, for you. Plug in negative 1, we get 1 minus 2 plus 1, which is 0, I believe. Plug in 0, you get 1. Plug in 1, you get 4. Plug in 2, you get 9. Plug in 3, you get... 6, 15, 16, plug in 4, you get 16, 8, 24, 25. Notice there is a pattern there. You subtract 5, you subtract 3, you subtract 1, you add 1, you add 3, you add 5, you add 7, you add 9, you add 11, you add constant second difference. This is what a constant second difference is going to look like when you graph it. Your first point is negative 4, positive 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's negative 4, positive 9. And y'all hang with me, I'm nearly done. Negative 3, positive 4. What'd you say? It is. It's, it's the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Negative 2, positive 1. Negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3. I think I messed up on negative 3, positive 4. 1, 2, 3, yeah, that should have been moved up 1. My bad. 1, 4 goes right 1 up 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2, 9, right 2 up 9. Uh, do you see what your graphs do? It's a, it's a U shape, and we're just going to kind of try to hit our points as best as we can. It's U. It, it curves. These are called, we'll get to these later on, these are called parabolas. But my point for you is the same method that you just used, where you pick, you have your X's. You just simply plug them in, you find your Y's, and you put them on a graph, connect your dots. If you can do connect the dots... Once you, once you get these in here, everybody's done connect the dots. If you can do connect the dots, you can graph any of these.